One of the advantages of laboratory testing to field testing is that within a laboratory, we can take a structural system and really push it to its limits and identify its nonlinear behaviors. Uh, when it comes to field testing, we can't really walk up to a bridge and permanently damage that bridge. That would be considered unacceptable. But in a laboratory, that is fine. That is exactly what we desire. Now, within the laboratory vibration testing uh, domain, there are three methods that are most commonly used. The first one is quasi-static cyclic method. The second is shake table testing. And lastly, we have the hybrid simulation. Each of these methods have their own advantages and disadvantages. And in this video, we're going to learn how they operate, first of all, and secondly, what their benefits and limitations are. So we have three types of experiments, quasi-static testing, shake table testing, and hybrid simulation. And what I'd like to do now is to bundle them such that hybrid simulation is interacting with both of them. The reason for this is that hybrid simulation can be done at slow and fast speeds. And so whenever we have a slow speed, uh, what we're pretty much interested in is the static behavior and some of the nonlinear behaviors. And when we're looking at fast uh, testing, we're looking at dynamic behaviors as well as nonlinear and sort of any kind of material rate dependence that may exist that we want to capture from the experimental testing. So let's talk about quasi-static testing and what it really means. Quasi-static testing is a slow speed cyclic method where a predefined displacement or force history is imposed on a physical structural element. And we do this by connecting the structural element with actuators uh, that are able to impose forces and displacements. And there's typically a load cell that measures any kind of forces that are generated from the experiment. The performance of the structure is then assessed under cyclic load reversal and amplitude variations. And with this method, the nonlinear hysteretic behavior of a structure is obtained. And uh, the slow and static nature of the method allows researchers to observe the damage in the physical specimen as it develops in real time. So we get a hysteretic behavior that sort of looks like this. As you may expect, this method has its advantages and disadvantages, with the advantages being that it's easy to do and it allows observations and we can pause experiments in real time, uh, while the disadvantages are that rate dependence and any kind of dynamic behavior uh, that are expected from the material are ignored. So now we're going to look at an example involving a steel column and we're going to see what quasi-static testing looks like. next method we're going to talk about is called shake table testing. And here researchers use shake tables to subject structures to synthetic and historical earthquakes. So a shake table is typically comprised of load cells, actuators, a shaker, which has the onboard structural uh, system of interest. Uh, what we do is we typically take earthquakes, either the acceleration or the displacement manifestation of the earthquake. Um, and we replicate that with a shake table at the real speeds of the earthquake. So this is a fast uh, type of experiment. And so uh, typically the shake tables have algorithms that are able to help it uh, capture and replicate uh, the true nature of the record because we want to use that for research. So uh, this is what it's supposed to look like. Now looking at the advantages and disadvantages of the shake table testing method, in terms of advantages, this is a complete and accurate testing method. Uh, it is dynamic and it can capture rate dependent behaviors in some materials. Uh, in terms of disadvantages, big shake tables are really expensive to build and operate and small shake tables require uh, dynamic similitude scaling, which can be really hard to do. And also you have to build an entire structure. You can not just test one element at a time. So let's look at an example involving a simple frame uh, that is installed on a shake table.
Hybrid simulation is an alternative method to shake table and quasi-static test methods for examining the responses of structures. Uh, in a hybrid test, a uh, reference structure is typically uh, broken down into numerical and physical substructures. Uh, with the numerical being components that we're already familiar with, these are components that are perhaps expected to behave in the linear elastic range. And the physical uh, being uh, structures that are perhaps new technologies, ones that we don't have good models for, uh, or ones that are expected to behave in a highly uh, nonlinear way. And we also need to calculate boundary conditions and restoring forces between the two. Now, hybrid simulation sounds really complicated and sophisticated, but what it really comes down to is four simple steps. The first step is that at each time step, a force excites the numerical substructure. Then within the numerical substructure, the displacements at the boundary conditions with the physical specimen are computed. Next, a control and kinematic algorithm are added to make sure that the uh, substructures can correctly communicate with each other. And lastly, physical execution is complete via actuators and restoring forces are recorded and returned to the numerical model for the next uh, step of the simulation. Historically speaking, this method has been executed at slow speeds, but we can also execute hybrid simulation at real speeds of the natural hazards. Uh, so it will be called real-time hybrid simulation. And so this method is useful for capturing dynamic and rate dependent behaviors of materials. The advantages of hybrid simulation are that it's a flexible method. We can run it at slow or fast speeds, depending on the research and the applications we're interested in. Uh, it is cost efficient. And the disadvantage is that it's still an area of research. And uh, a lot of the algorithms that exist within this method are still not very perfect. So now we're going to look at an illustrative example involving a multi-span curved bridge structure where two of the piers are tested physically, uh, the third pier and the deck of the bridge are tested numerically, and of course there is interactions between the two, and we're going to see the combined behavior of this uh, bridge. 